CSET, subtest 1, insight, constructor response question pertaining to functions, question number 2, A, B, and C. All right, so for the first part, this is an exponential question. Since this value is less than 1, it's a decay question. If this value were more than 1, it would be a growth question. So, we know that 3 fourths to the 0 power is 1. So it's going to have a y-intercept there of 1. 3 fourths to the 1 is 3 fourths. 3 fourths squared is 9 over 16. And what we see is it's getting smaller and tapering off because of the asymptote idea occurring at y equals zero. Okay. Now, labeling the asymptotes, we have not yet done that yet. So we have y equals zero as an asymptote. 0, 1 is our intercept. Part B, we're going to do a pretty pink. Graph the inverse function. Well, what we want to think about is drawing a line y equals x, which just cuts this right down the middle. of f of x. Let's label it f of x. So, you want to think about looking at it like this. If I had a sheet of paper, of course, I would turn it the right way and not look quite so silly with my head all akimbo. Now, this point zero, 1 becomes 1, 0. You can think about x and y flipping. This little portion was right here, and now it kind of comes down and kind of goes off there. A little symmetry there. Now up here, it used to go up this way, and now it's going to kind of go up this way. And it was hugging this axis, so now it's going to be hugging this axis. We don't know exactly that point where it intersects. It's not too important. Let's go ahead and label this one more time. It's 1, 0. And now what we see is we have a... asymptote here at x equals 0 for the inverse graph, f inverse. Alright. So find the equation of f inverse. Let's go ahead and do that. Remember, anytime we have a function and we want to find its inverse, we want to think about this just being y, and we flip the positions on x and y. So once we flip x and y, we get this. We want to get y by itself. So that means we're going to take a log of both sides. I'm going to go ahead and take log base 3 fourths. I'm taking log base 3 fourths because I want that 3 fourths to go away. So the y comes out front, and what we are left with is log base 3 fourths of x equals y. So, this finishes part b. This is our inverse function now. I should put that 3 fourths a little bit lower, maybe even call it 0.75 power so it's clear. Of x equals f inverse. Now, for part c, Find the domain and range of f and f inverse. Well, the domain here for x was all real, so there was no limit. So the domain is all reals. Now, the range, let's go ahead and just put all reals. The range is going to be that f of x has to be greater than 0 because of the asymptote. 
is flip-flops for our inverse function. So now the domain is that x has to be greater than 0, because it doesn't cut past this axis, this asymptote. And the range is that the y, the f of x, f inverse value, can be anything. Let's just write all reals and make life simple. Now, describing graphically the relationship between f of x and f inverse, what we see is that they are mirror images of one another. They are reflected across the line y equals x. Each and every x y coordinate on the other graph becomes a y x coordinate. So, describing it graphically, f and f inverse are reflections of each other across the line y equals x. And there's part c. So, 